there we go again. Dad, though, been a rotten mood all night now. He's not been in good spirits since the quarry closed. I'm not surprised, to be honest. I'd be angry too if I found out during my summer holidays that I had no job to go back to because the quarry was closing. It's hard for the old man, having worked at the Norwich since turning 15. He doesn't know what to do with himself these days. He must be finding it hard so seeing so many of his former co-workers having found jobs by now. He's not going to work in some dark factory like Ferrotto or Public Mills, he says. Hasn't he been a man of the open air forever? But even if it is hard for him, I'm starting to get fed up with him being angry with Mam all the time because she's gone back to work at the hair salon. That's where she used to work before she had me. She's been incredibly busy there and working long hours because all the girls from the village want beehives and bobs after reading all the latest fashion magazines from London. A lot of them work in the local clothes factory. Don't a lot of women work these days for sure. <laughs> Dad has some old fashioned ideas sometimes. He still thinks that Mam should be at home because she's married looking after the house and making sure there's supper on the table for Dad and me. I don't agree. The times have changed and I'm glad the Mam can go out to work. There wouldn't be any money coming in otherwise. Ever since we got this new electric oven, it's easy enough for me to sort something for supper if Mam is working late. Even though Dad says cooking is a woman's job. It's about time Dad moved with the times. A lot has changed in the last decade. We didn't have a phone ten years ago, let alone a television. I was reading the paper the other day and they were looking back at some of the headlines of the decade. The biggest stories of the 60s. And gosh, I enjoyed looking back. This is the first decade I remember in its entirety. And it's interesting to think how much I've changed as well. I was a little boy of eight in 1960, and now I'm 17 and hoping to go to the college in Bangor to study Welsh next summer. The paper discussed a lot of the big stories of the last 10 years, but there weren't as many stories as I'd have liked about Wales. I want to be a journalist and share stories about Wales with the world. So I've been keeping newspaper clippings for years, with these, I'll learn about what makes a good story, as well as how to tell it. I'll put the fire on before we start. An electric fire like this one is much easier than having to go and fetch coal every time. We were lucky to have this fire back in the hard winter of 1963. This was the coldest winter in over 200 years and Hin Patarn froze solid I remember seeing people skating on the ice and somebody drove a motorbike from one end of the lake to the other. But despite all the fun in the snow, the first serious story I remember from this decade is the struggles of the civil rights movement in America. Reading about the protest of these brave people made me realise how lucky I am here in Wales. Imagine not being allowed to go to a specific school, or sit in a seat on the bus, or even go to a toilet somewhere just because of the colour of your skin. It's all so awful, and I'm so glad that they won their battle to stop the rule of segregation, keeping white people and black people apart. I hate hearing about injustice like this. I think everyone deserves to be treated the same. The most awful story I read from America in this period was when the Ku Klux Klan bombed a church in Birmingham, Alabama, killing four young black girls who were in the building at the time. The youngest was only 11, the same age as Katri next door now, younger than me, and all they were doing was going to Sunday school. Well, this tragic story from Alabama was shared in the Western Mail, 
and an artist called John Petts offered to create a new stained glass window for the church if the people of Wales raised the money to pay for it. Nobody was allowed to give more than half a crown to make sure that this was a gift from as many people from Wales as possible. And I sent in my pocket money. The new window was installed in 1965 and it looks so beautiful from the pictures I've seen. I'm so glad to think that these people who fought for their rights have the beautiful Wales window to look at as they worship on a Sunday. Unfortunately, a lot of the stories about Wales which have reached the British newspapers in the last decade have been sad ones. I'll never forget coming home from school one day and Mam giving me a big hug and holding on to me tightly. I didn't understand why she looked like she'd been crying until she explained what she'd heard on the radio. One of the cold tips above Abervan in South Wales had collapsed after heavy rain and landed on the village's primary school, killing over a hundred children. The newspaper images in the days after were awful. This dark black muck covering the streets and people digging through the rubble to try and find more children. I was scared of the sleet tips around here for a while, even though Dad said they were completely safe. The Abervan disaster was exactly a year to the day of another sad event in Welsh history, which is the drowning of Capel Kellyn, a little village near Abala, on October 21st, 1965. You see... They needed a new water reservoir for Liverpool and they decided to create one there even though many families still lived in the village even though Welsh MPs voted against the decision even though there were countless protests they weren't successful everyone had to move out of the village and all of the buildings were demolished and drowned Imagine having to leave home and close the door behind you for the very last time, knowing you could never go back. Although the story of Capel Kellyn is very sad, I think it lit a spark in a lot of Welsh people. If we don't protest and fight for our rights, then who will? I've joined Cymdith Eis, the Society for the Welsh Language. Did you see my poster upstairs? Gnewch bopeth yn Gymraeg. Do everything in Welsh. It's a good rule, isn't it? Welsh is my first language, and I think I should have the right to use it. I've been protesting for the language, and some of the protests have worked. People in Wales now have the right to get government forms in Welsh. It's a small step, of course, but each small step makes a difference. Like Neil Armstrong said, did you see him on the television, landing on the moon and saying, this is one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. <laughs> Incredible, wasn't it? Mind you, the people of Wales still have quite a few steps still to take for the language. Even though I speak Welsh at home and every day, all of my lessons in school are in English. While schools are starting to open, like a school Glan Clwyd in Rhyl, and I hope more children in Wales will be having their lessons in Welsh before long. But then, who knows? A lot of people in Llanberis are too busy talking about the, all the excitement in Carnarvon last summer, to protest for Welsh language rights. I'm talking about the investiture, of course, which is the huge ceremony to crown Charles, Prince of Wales, in Carnarvon Castle last July. Mam was over the moon. She likes the royals. And she went down to be one of the thousands on the mice waiting to wave. She's bought that special cup to remember and everything. She'd have a fit if she knew I've just made a pan out of it now. Dad agrees with me that it's all a load of nonsense. Although, 
he was keen to remind everyone that the special slate stage and the special chairs were made in the Norway quarry. Why does Wales need a prince that lives in a posh palace in London, I say. Although, I have enjoyed the songs by David Iwan that poke fun at the whole thing. The 60s have been so exciting in so many ways, and I feel lucky to have been young during this time. When Dad was my age, he'd already been working at the quarry for around three years. But I get to stay in school and go to college if I work hard enough in the exams. We've had incredible music in the last few years. The Beatles and the Rolling Stones and loads of exciting Welsh music. I've been teaching myself to play David Iwan songs on the guitar and I have loads of records from Tom Jones to Hugh Jones and Hoker Widva, the local favourites, of course. And from seeing the girls in the village, fashion has changed a lot too. They love the new miniskirts. It's fashionable for men to have long hair now as well. But I'm going to wait until I'm in college to grow my hair properly. It's one less thing to argue with Dad about. I better go. There's a concert in the Majestic in Carnarvon tonight and I don't want to miss it.